Well, anybody here excited about Christmas? Hey, here I go. I, I have at least a few people that are excited. You know, I'm good. I'm happy about it. I know some of the some some of the some of us or somebody that we know, somebody, some of the family the members or anything like that. For some of us, Christmas is not a uh, uh, a great joyful thing uh, as everybody uh, uh, goes because some the loved one or something uh, bad happened in our lives or something like that. But I encourage you not to just dwell on those things, but instead go on to Jesus who made all things possible for us. This is a season to celebrate not the frailties of our human life, but the goodness and the greatness of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, many people argue about Jesus was not born in uh, December. Jesus was born in so and so. Uh, all those kinds of things. But I want to tell you something. Is Jesus born? Yeah? I'm celebrating his birth. I'm celebrating that I, he came into my life. When? I, I can choose it. God is not striking me down because I'm celebrating in December. All right, people are getting so religious about it, so uh, legalistic about it. I'm like, okay, what, what's wrong with you? My date of birth, the, they wrote something wrong in my records. I, I don't even know how old I am, but that's okay. I still celebrate my birthday. I am born, so um, that's okay. We don't have to uh, worry about all those things and trying to um, uh, put ourselves in that legalistic mindset where we are trying to uh, bring God down and, and instead of giving, taking the opportunity to celebrate it with joy. It's a, it's a time of joy. It's a time of, of peace. It's a time of uh, 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 um, greatness from God. So, so we, will, we will stick to it. I don't know about you. I will celebrate it. I will celebrate it because Jesus is born in my heart. He is living in me, so I will continue to celebrate. I will continue to honor him. I will continue to appreciate him in my life. Okay, you might say, oh, December is not, it's a pagan thing. I'm like, I took over it, man. As Christian, with my faith, I sanctified it. <laughs> now, this is a sanctified thing. People have uh, issues with the tree. I took over it. Now it is sanctified. You know, I once was a sinner, once I took over, once Jesus took over it, yes, it is sanctified, amen? Anything like that, every, when, when we bring it down and pour it at the feet of Jesus Christ, it's sanctified. And so, so uh, let's not uh, get into that legalistic debate that people try to pull and try to um, take the joy out of our lives. Forget about it. And let this be a time where we celebrate and rejoice in God's goodness in our lives. Whether we have things or not, whether we have presents or not, whether we have tree or not, whether we have life in our, uh, or not, whether we have uh, 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 finances or not. But I want you to know for sure we have Jesus. It's worth the celebration. It's worth the celebration and we do celebrate it with joy. Amen. Even when I am broke, I celebrated it. Even when I am pay in pain, I celebrated it. Even when I was rejected, it I I was rejected. I celebrated it, because what I am doing when I am celebrating this great gift that mankind ever received, well, I'm telling the devil, devil, get thee behind me. And that, my actions are talking to him, saying, "You can throw hell at me, but I'm gonna rejoice because Jesus is with me." What else could be a better confession than that? And I look at it like that. I, this is my confession. I'm taking this opportunity to celebrate my peace giver, my joy giver, my delight. I'm going to celebrate him. Amen. So I encourage you uh, uh, um, to, to be mindful of that and to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's not about a man-made tradition. But yes, there are some traditions we, we do follow. I'm not saying uh, when the traditions are annulling the word, that's when tradition has a problem. That's the problem. Traditions in itself is nothing wrong with it. If it is bringing us close to God, if it is allowing us to celebrate Jesus, yes, that's okay. That's okay. Let's do that. Let's, let's, let's rejoice in it. And, I, and the reason I'm encouraging all of, the, all of you in this right now is this is a time where we can... Uh, put put aside aside all the pain that we have gone through. You know, it's a good thing for me to celebrate at the end of the year, 
because all the toil that I have gone through, all the challenges I have gone through, now I have a glorious moment where I can come to Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. This is a great opportunity for me to enter into the new year with thanksgiving. Amen. This is a great season for me to rejoice that God is good and God is faithful in my life. I, you know, what, is, is God with you this year? You may not see him. Uh, in, in, some of us may have not seen him big uh, like we want, but he is still there. He's been there when we are crying. He's been there when we are falling. He's been there when we are failing. He's been there when we are successful. When we are achieving things, he's there. He's, you know, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's going to be committed to us. And so that, 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 that's the reason I would rejoice in him. I would rejoice in what he is for me and what he is doing in my life. Amen. So the scripture today, uh, um, um, for my message, we have the song we celebrate greatly the, during this season. We sing, I like it, being that we never get to see it. We still like the song, Let It Snow, right? Let it snow, let it snow. We don't get to see it, you know, in Florida. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, today my title is Let It Flow. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. So we can sing that song later. But uh, <laughs> for now, let's go into the book of Ezekiel, 47th chapter, starting from verse 1 through 12. Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple faced forward, the east for the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate, and he led me around on the outside to the outer, and led me around on the outside outer gateway and fa that faces the east and there was water running out, out on the right side and when the man went out to the east with the lines in his hand he measured one thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters the water came up to my ankles again he measured one thousand and brought me through the waters the waters the w came up to my knees I guess he measured one thousand and brought me through the water came up to my waist again he measured one thousand it was a, ri a river that could that I could not cross, for the ri for the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a, r a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and retur returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. It shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. And there will be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters go there. For they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Engedi to Englaim. They will be places for spreading their nets. <laughs> their fish will be of the same kind as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But as swamps and marshes will not be healed, they will be given over to the salt. Along the bank of the rivers on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for their food. <laughs> their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fall, fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be food, be for food and their leaves for medicine. Amen. Thank you. This is one of the um, great um, visions that... Uh, Ezekiel the prophet receives. Prophet Ezekiel uh, receives great revel great uh, uh, insights how heaven operates and how uh, God operates and this is one of the uh, vision uh, that he receives from God and in this uh, this man of God is being uh, 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 taken by an angel and he is traveling through things. He, he, he was shown things and uh, uh, this is this is a place where he is exposed to water. Okay, Bible in the Bible, water has a significance. 
you know the water baptism that we talk about that has a significance it's not the water is not the purifier water cannot pu purify it by itself the water has a representation water has a, 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 an implication behind it then that that's what that's what the Bible talks about and we need to learn and understand what this water means to us and I believe um, one of the reasons I'm going after this teaching uh, uh, is <coughs> many times uh, uh, we have a lot of theologies also out there. People who, do, who believe, who does not believe in Trinity, they still confess themselves to be Christians. They do not believe in Trinity. They just believe uh, one God and everything else falls in it. And, uh, and but the, the God that we serve, the Bible talks about, is three in one, Trinity, triune God. We talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have three of them, three have different offices, and some theologians even try to uh, say there are more attributes to God than just those three. But okay, I'm not going after that. But what was shown to us in the Bible, those are the three ones, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But in, in, the, uh, uh, in the church, unfortunately, what happens is we forget or we give least preference to somebody, uh, one who is equal in the Trinity, that is the Holy Spirit. Everybody is fine with God the Father. Everybody is fine with Jesus. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, a lot of the people have a lot of apprehensions. But the truth is, without the Holy Spirit, there is no church. Without the Holy Spirit, because He is the one who gave birth to church. He is the one who started the church. When church was started, Jesus Christ was not on this earth. Amen? So without the Holy Spirit, church is directionless. And that is why we see a lot of these churches failing left and right. Because they are forgetting the director. The one who originated them. The one who is leading them. The one he has, who has a mission to take them to a destiny. They are not following him. And we, we do not give him the importance that we ought to give. Why am I talking about Holy Spirit during the season where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? Alright, I have an answer for that too. Why I am talking about the Holy Spirit? Because if, Je if Jesus is born, his mission can only be continued through the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, Jesus is nothing to us. Holy, Holy Spirit came into our lives. Holy Spirit was sent onto this earth to give us Jesus. You know, that's what Jesus talks about, Holy Spirit, in the, uh, in the gospel according to St. John. He says, he will come and he will teach you the things to come. And Bible even talks about him as the comforter. How many of us need comfort? And if we are neglecting the Holy Spirit, where can we get comfort? Are you with me? This is a season where we celebrate warmth. We want to be warm. I mean, like, of course, we don't have snow. But people that live in cold areas, they want that heat. They want that warmth. They want that comfort. Even now, even here, we try to drink hot chocolate. Even we try to do things that would make us feel warm. That would, that would make us feel comfortable. Right? So that comfort is what we look for. But that comfort is never going to come into our life without the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us that comfort. And many, many, many times this is what, what is happening. People, we all, we all fall under this. We, we just assume the Holy Spirit as something um, that uh, many times uh, uh, we, we, we link him up with some kind of crazy things or craziness that's out there and we try to push him away. Today I want to explain to you a little bit of, of his office and how to reap the benefits of him. Amen. And when you are reaping the benefits of Holy Spirit, you are truly reaping the benefits of Jesus. Because Holy Spirit was a sent one, not a went one. Okay. He was sent with a mission. 
His mission is to give Jesus to the church. That's his job right now. He's not creating. He, in the beginning, oh, I, I have to go there. In the beginning, when the creation was being created, the Bible says the spirit was hovering. He, 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 uh, he, he couldn't do anything there. He's just going over. Going over. But as soon as the word was spoken, let there be light, the Holy Spirit goes to work. Okay. So now the job of the Holy Spirit is to bring the word to pass. You with me? So if you have a word from the Lord, who is that who is going to bring it to pass? It's the Holy Spirit. So he becomes so important, so vital in our lives that we need to learn how to operate with him. If you want to see how you can reap the benefits of Jesus, all the price that he paid, all the things he did, we have to go through Holy Spirit. We don't need to pray for him, but we live with him. That's why the Bible talks about him in communion. You know, I don't know if you, uh, if you ever went to uh, mainstream churches or anything like that, there will be a benediction. They end with this thing. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. The communion, common union. Communion, common union. If you want a common union with your God, it can only happen through the Holy Spirit. So never underestimate the Holy Spirit's role in your life. He is very important for us. Whatever Jesus did, he is the one who is going to bring it to pass in our lives. So he becomes so vital in my life. So I want to follow him. I want to understand him so I can reap more benefits of Jesus. Many times there are, I, I've seen people that love Jesus so much, that care for this God so much, but they are not connected to the Holy Spirit. When they are not connected to the Holy Spirit, all they have is an empty theology. You know, we are trying to worship God with our knowledge. Where we always are falling short. What, we, what the Holy Spirit does is, He gives us an in, insight, He gives us an inner connect, He gives us something that makes it so unique for you. He knows exactly how unique you are and how unique your plan is. And he is the one who can show you from the scripture, from the scripture, not from anything else, not from the traditions. Don't walk away from Jesus. Jesus is the word. Amen. The Holy Spirit's job is not to make you do crazy things, but he will make you do what the word says. Everything the Holy Spirit reveals to us, everything the Holy Spirit uh, leads us is lined up with God's word. Amen. So we have to follow him. We need to, many times we see these days, oh, God speaks to me. Christians. Not outsiders. Christians look at me as crazy. God talks to you? God talks to you? God the Almighty talks to you? Yeah. My sheep will hear my voice. He said it, not me. He, he, how can I hear the voice of God? It is through the Holy Spirit again. Again, it is the Holy Spirit who gives us that. It is the Holy Spirit who lets us get connected with God. So, so he becomes a very, very important part of my relationship with God. Without him, I cannot have the full-on relationship God ordained for me. Or God desires from me. I can do it with my strength. But Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When it comes to doing great things or when it comes to having a relationship. It is not something you can do on your own. But it is something the spirit of the Lord leads us. And, and this is another struggle. Oh if the Holy Spirit speaks to me. How in the world I can't hear him. Oh God. You know many times I hear people asking me. Many, many times people ask me this question. Uh, 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 why wouldn't God speak to me? Why wouldn't God speak to me? I'm going to tell you something. God is speaking to you. Are you listening? 
And that's why many times if you see Jesus says, He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. It is about your hearing, not about speaking. God is speaking all the time. He is always communicating to us. Whether you are a Christian or a not Christian, He is communicating. He is speaking to us. But when you are hearing, when you open up your ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell, there you go, you have an answer. There are great inventions that came onto this earth because those people heard from God. Great things, not simple things. You know, have you ever seen this? Uh, uh, um, one of the, the designs for caterpillars, these big machines, you see them? Caterpillar, it goes like a caterpillar, right? The original designer of it is a Christian. God, he was an engineer. God taught him through the caterpillar how he can create this machine. He who has ears, let him hear. He who has ears, let him hear. You're trying to look for things elsewhere when it is the Holy Spirit who can give you, break it down and give you the insight how you can connect from this to that area. I'm going to give you a simple experience of mine which might encourage you. One day I'm walking on the street. There was, a, 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 there was this guy whose tractor, this is a big one, a huge tractor, that uh, he, he, was, uh, his, uh, 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 he was trying to uh, repair one of his tires. He's struggling with it. And when he is struggling with that thing, uh, I, will, I, I stopped. And I went, I went to him and asked him, hey, can you help me? Can, can, can I help you for, with anything? And he, he looked at me and he said, I've been working on this for the last one hour. And I'm not able to get this thing to fit on my, my tractor. It's on the main, 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 main highway and he's struggling and struggling and sweating and all this. And then I go there and I, was, I never drove a tractor in my whole life. I do not have an understanding how those things work. But I do know that there is a Holy Spirit that works in me. So I ask the Holy Spirit that is living in me, God, how can I help this man who is in desperate situation, who needs help? How can I help him? Then comes a simple insight to me. He gives me a certain angle in which if you tap, he gives that instruction. And I'm like, okay, can we try this? The brother was trying, this man was struggling for almost more than an hour. He was at it trying to get it work. But I walk in, who, was, who doesn't have any knowledge about it, and in that one second, I tell him, do, th do this. Bam. It opens up. It opens up. All right. Now, here, it is not something uh, um, I know. This is not my knowledge. But it is the Holy Spirit who is willing to give it to us. Who is willing to show those things to us. So we can be of a great use in this community. In the society around us. Amen. Keeping those things in mind. Let us read. Let us go back to this scripture again. It talks about water coming from the sanctuary. It talks about the water flowing from the sanctuary. That water, I will break it down and I will show it to you. Let, let, let's talk about this water. Go with me to the book of John. We will come back to the Ezekiel again. Go with me. Hold, hold yourself at Ezekiel. And let's go to John 37. Oh, John 7, I'm sorry. John doesn't have 37. John 7, starting from 37th verse. On the last day, that the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures has said out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. But th this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom, told, wh whom those believing in him will receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. All right, Jesus is connecting what is water. He talks about water, and he says, The Holy Spirit, whoever is thirsty, come to me and drink this water. The water is the Holy Spirit. 
Am I okay with that deduction? Okay. So you, in, uh, uh, now that we concluded the water that we are talking about here is the Holy Spirit. Not just the water. Bible talks about this water. And even the, remember this thing. When you are uh, following any of this thing like water baptism or anything like that. That's a sign that we are telling. We are confessing to ourselves. In the Holy Spirit we go and come out. We are getting immersed. Baptismo. Baptismo is immersion. That we are confessing that I am getting ready to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is the, the story that Jesus clearly says, whoever is thirsty, come to me and drink of me. And, uh, and he makes a point there that I will talk about it down the line. Uh, but well, let's go back to the book of Ezekiel 47th chapter again. That, that talks about the, 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 the water that is coming from the sanctuary. Not from anywhere, not from any great places out there, but from the sanctuary. And that water that, that is coming, um, he, there is a flow for it. Ezekiel, when he was traveling, he, he was led to it in phases. Okay. So for the first phase, when he gets into the water, the water was ankle deep. The next thing you see him is the waist deep. And the next thing we see, he is drowning and he has to swim. There are phases that he, it goes through. And from there, I want to conclude something. For you to grow in the Holy Spirit, it goes through phases. It needs to be done in phases. Many times, some of us experience a little bit from the Holy Spirit and we think that's it. But I'm here to tell you there is more to explore from the Holy Spirit than what you and me know. It is so important that, that we need to learn and grow in the levels of how the Holy Spirit can flow. This is not about you. Can I say this again? This is not about you. I'm talking about the flow. I'm not talking about you. I want the flow. And that is why I made the state, made the title today, let it flow. What is it? Not you, but the Holy Spirit. He needs to flow through us. And I will, I, we, we, we will study more and more down the line. But <clears throat> when we look at, our, look at the Holy Spirit, I want you to look. There is a reason why God compares Holy Spirit with water. Because water can flow or can transform into whichever mold you give it. Amen? The water can move. You can't stop water, pour water on a floor. It won't stop. It keeps flowing. It always has a flow. But how far can it go? That's something we have to pursue today. Now, look at this thing as a reservoir. What does the reservoir do? A dam. I'm not cursing, you know. <laughs> a dam, what does it do? It holds a large quantity of water. But it doesn't stop there. There are channels. All right. The channels, what does it do? Whatever was stored is being released. If that wasn't so, it cannot be a reservoir. It cannot be a dam. Am I, am I right on that? So now, you and me are not the water, but we are the dams. All right. We are to be somebody who can capture the water, the Holy Spirit, and let it glow. Let it flow. Why? I'll tell you as we go down. The flow needs to continue. The Holy Spirit needs to continue to flow because the plants are depending on the water, not on you. They don't need a dam, but they need a water. Are you with me on that? They don't need you, but they need the one that is in you. The people around us, they may not need us, but they need the Holy Spirit that is in us. And our job as the people, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, 
Are you excited about it? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Bible talks about it, so. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Another, look at this. The water is coming from where? The temple. The temple. The sanctuary. It is coming from there. The temple is you. So the water is flowing from you. The day you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, the day you confess that you are a sinner and I need a savior, and you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and your savior, you became a dam. You are now receiving the Holy Spirit. You received the Holy Spirit in you. Now, what we are doing is the one that is received, two things are happening here that we need to focus on. One, this receiving is a continual process. The dam receives water regularly, not once in a while. And the problem here, if we block it, from receiving the water, what happens? The water gets dried out. So the temple that is supposed to flow is now dried out. And the Christian who is supposed to be the light of the world is in darkness. It's because of the water. Not because of anything else. It is because of the water. We need to focus and get back to that. I need my water. I don't care. No matter what I know, no matter how much I have gained, when we get into the presence of God and when we are lifting up our hands and worshiping God, what are we getting? We are getting water. Oh, that's why I don't mind throwing my hands up because I want more of Him. I want more of that water in my life. Because I know I cannot change, change anybody. I cannot change anything. But I know this water, glory be to God in heaven, this water has the power to heal the dead. Heal the Dead Sea is what Bible talks about here. The Dead Sea will become, will become alive because of the water, not because of us. And this is where the water becomes so important in our life. We need that water for it to flow. And first step we do, we are stopping that from flowing. One, that is where we can hinder. That's one thing I want us to pay attention to. And then there is a second thing that where we, where we are not doing what we ought to do is we are not letting it go. The problem here, the, the design of a dam is if it doesn't let it go, it will break. We have to let it go. The more we let go, what happens? We get fresh water. We get fresh water here. We are not living off of stale water. And that's why when we see, we can tell the difference between a pond and a river. We're talking about a river, not a pond. We don't need to be ponds. We need to be rivers where there is a continual supply of the water. We just need to let it flow. We just need the water to flow through us. Otherwise, we are still in that mold where the water is stagnant. Where we are converted. We are becoming a place where mosquitoes brood. We are becoming a swamp. Where the things need, could, should have been thriving, the, the, the creatures should have been thriving, the fish should have been thriving, the things around us should have been thriving, are now becoming swamps. You with me? It is not about, it, it, it is not about you, but the water. So now we need to understand where we stand. And the Holy Spirit is an experience that is always for it to grow. Swimming. You can swim. You know, when you go, I'm, I'm not a good swimmer. But, but uh, uh, you, you know, you can swim even in the deepest of the deepest waters. There is still so much more water to explore. Isn't it? And that's what God is talking about. Maybe we, some of us are still in the ankle deep with the Holy Spirit. Maybe we need to move further. 
go further where we are still till, till to our waist. We are only experiencing Holy Spirit till the ankles. Or maybe we are still, some of us are still standing on the bank. Trying to happen. Trying for something to happen there. No, no, no. Maybe you need to step in. Isn't that what faith is about? We need to step in. That's what faith does. Faith allows us to step into the water. This water is a water that won't kill you. But it will make you. Amen. So now, now the, 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 he goes on. He talks about all these, all these uh, stages of water that goes on. We need to understand, where do I stand? You know, your weight is not in how much you have or what you know, but how much of the Holy Spirit you contain. How much of the Holy Spirit you yield to, you open yourself up to. Now, now look at this thing. He, he talks about the Holy Spirit is going to dwell in your heart. Jesus says, out of your heart flows the issues of life. Now, why, is, why in the world heart is that important? The heart that God talks about is the spirit, right? That spirit is from eternity to eternity. It can expand. There are no limits for it. If it is just with our physical body, there are limits. But God gives us a room. God gives us a, 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 a wine skin. Am I going to the right story? The wine and the wine skin. All right. The wine skin that is going to hold the wine is something that can expand as much as you want. You know, that's why he says, don't pour the new wine in the old wine skins. That need, we need a new wine skin that is a new heart. We need a new heart so he can pour the new wine into it, which is the newness of the Holy Spirit. What happens when the new wine is poured into an old wine, wine skin? The wine skin, the wine expands. When the expansion happens, the old wine skin bursts open. But if you have a new, new wine skin with the new wine, it, it, it grows with it. There is no problem. That's why God needs us to have this new heart. We need this new heart. That, that's why he asks us when, he, when we are born again. He says, I'm going to give you a new spirit. And I'm going to give you a new heart. That is his new covenant. So now you have what it takes. Oh, this is only, this is, this, 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 I can only handle this much. No, you're lying to yourself. There is more. You have to let it expand. You have to receive it from your spirit, not from your head. It doesn't make sense for me to lift my hands and worship somebody whom I don't see. But if I let my spirit take over, it is always willing. Let me clap hands for this guy. Let me worship him. Let me speak my words out. Let me do everything and everything possible to show how grateful I am. Amen. This is the, the Holy Spirit likes worship. When we are worshiping, it is not about singing songs, y'all. That's why I encourage you. The service is important, but the worship is very important. Because that is what takes us into the presence. We need it. We need that worship. When we worship God, when we are opening ourselves, I need more of this. And, and what happens? Look at this thing. When we are thirsty, if you have a cup of water, how will you feel? Oh, you feel great. You feel uh, rejuvenated. You feel alive. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit does to us. We need more of him and less of us. We need him to grow more in us. When we are throwing ourselves at his feet, what are we doing? God, grow in me. I need you to grow in me so I cannot thirst. I don't want to be thirsty because I'm already fed. You know, there is a theory which is debunked again. But if you are thirsty, you, are, you know, if you are feeling that you need to drink water, you are thirsty a long time back. Don't wait till you are dry. Don't wait there. Ooh, let's go. Let's always replenish with the Holy Spirit. 
we need more of him every single morning lift your arms up do whatever we worship him every single day we need a quota a dose of holy spirit every day of our life oh i'm going to tell you something today to you how your troubles are going to cease if you take a daily dose of holy spirit daily dose of holy spirit we need a daily dose of holy spirit this is where we struggle many times that we look for healing elsewhere when the holy spirit the healer the one who is manifesting the healing of jesus christ is available for us let him flow let him come in the mental agony that we are going through the depression that we are going through the fears that we are going through let the king of kings and the lord of lords take over it and let when we worship him we are making this thing small and jesus is being exalted now we can shout like the shepherd people saying glory be to god in heaven cuz peace is with me hallelujah hallelujah so we need to be somebody who desires this holy spirit more than ever before we need more of this spirit than less of it don't try to contain the holy spirit be open for him be led by him he is the leader we are the follower can somebody say amen to that he is the leader not not me we want the holy spirit to do what we want Oh come on now. We 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 like okay, I'm not comfortable doing that. Who is asking for your comfort? Because he is the one who gives you the comfort. You're looking for a fake comfort. When it is him who is going to give you the true comfort. Then many times I feel like my whole world is falling apart. My mind cannot think through. I feel like I need to kill myself. But bless God when I lift my hands up and say Lord I worship you spirit of the living God take over me glory be to God in heaven those thoughts are gone just like that those pressures are gone just like that the trouble is not gone I don't care for that but I am prepared to take it down I'm ready to pull it down does iron rods or iron curtains whatever you want to call those things it is a thing in the past for me because now i have the king of kings and the lord of lords the one who created the whole universe is now the in charge of this scene not me not me the mountains bow down everything has to bow before him every name shall bow before him cancer has to bow depression has to bow agony has to bow pain has to bow Poverty has to bow. Every single thing has to bow before him. I'm letting him be the boss. That's why I keep saying again, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let the Holy Spirit flow in and through us. We need water. We need water. And now, the water that came from the sanctuary it is going through when it is going through when i returned there seventh verse when i returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other then he said to me this water flows toward the east region goes down into the valley and enter the enters the sea when it reaches the sea its water are here you look you look at the world and say it is misery over there it's pain over there it's fighting over there it's war over there what is it that's going to heal it the war not you not your great ideas not your great agenda but it is the war that is in you you are a reservoir let it go let it go the times when you face struggles the times when you are facing problems the times when you are seeing uh, troubled some situations don't walk away from it don't be like those people the hypocritical uh, pharisees and sadducees who saw the man that was dying walked away but this samaritan goes to it let us be those good samaritans where we walk into it and say i'm going to breathe life to you You can say the same thing to yourself. 
You can say the same thing to your thoughts. You can say the same thing through your sleepless nights. You can tell those nights, oh, your troubles are over now. I'm, on br I'm bringing some fresh water into your life. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit reign over this and drench this whole thing so you can sleep happy. No more sleepless nights. No more sleepless nights. Can somebody say amen to that? Oh, you might not be struggling with that tonight, today. But I know for sure the devil wants to attack us. But I don't want to waste, wait, wait until he attacks me. I want to be prepared and ready right now, even before he can come show his face. I am ready even before the enemy attacks. I like American military, military so much. He doesn't wait for North Korea to strike. We are already prepared to how to handle that strike. We, don't, we are not going to waste the time to prepare. How is this going to come? What is that going to happen? That army will never succeed. We are to be somebody who are ahead of the game, not behind. Let the Holy Spirit take over your teeth. Let the Holy Spirit take over your bones. Let the Holy Spirit take over your kidney, take over your liver, take over your heart. Let the healing of the Lord already work in us. Not when we have trouble. Right now. Every single day, let us receive a dose of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you know the, the, the good thing about this? There are no side effects. You can overdose on it. You can absolutely get OD'd on it. No problem. No problem with the Holy Spirit. Take as much as you want, as much as you like. Take it. Soak it up. And that's one of the reasons Friday night prayers are so amazing for us. That's when we take it in. We need more of it. Oh, this Wednesday was awesome. That's more of the Holy Spirit running into us. And we were like, the church service was over. We prayed and we are done. And then we started worshiping. It went on and on and on and on. We are, because we are like sponges, we are trying to suck it up. Everything that is out there, I need more of this water. I need more of this presence. I need more of him. Today, church, I encourage you, when you are coming to the church, when the songs are being sung, it is not for show. It is for us to have more water. Let everyone be uh, con conscious of it. It is not about singing. It is about filling us up. I need a filler. Come thirsty. Come thirsty. Oh, how good am I looking? Who cares? We have a lot of things that are going on in us. Let God set us free from that. When we are throwing ourselves at his feet, oh goodness, he is coming through. He is coming through. He is taking over that burden heart. He is taking over that sick body. He is taking over that sick mind. He is taking over anything and everything that is not in line with God's will. And what is he doing? He is bringing the manifestation of Jesus. That's, G that's the Holy Spirit's job. And when G God said, let there be light, there was no light. But he brought it into manifestation. What, what the job of the Holy Spirit is to bring the word of God to manifestation. It is his job to bring it to manifestation. So let him do his job while we exalt him, while we worship him, while we desire him more and more. Amen. Don't let the Holy Spirit be some kind of a weird thing, but let that be a so needed thing every day of our life. I need me a Holy Spirit fix every day. Before I drink coffee, I need Holy Spirit. Before I eat something, I need Holy Spirit. I need His presence in my life. Oh, look at that. That's why when, when, when God even, when he pre depicted, Jesus, depicted the Holy Spirit, he came on Jesus like a dove. You know, what does dove do? It's so sensitive. It, it, it flutters. It, it, it keeps going out over there. It hovers. And, and it needs to be invited. If you let that invitation be open, you will have more of him. You will have more of his flow into our lives. He is a gentle soul, gentle person. Holy Spirit is so gentle. He doesn't, he, he, he needs to be invited. He, he is not like the devil. Where he barges in. 
The devil, you never asked for trouble. Did he stop you from troubling you? No, he won't. He barges in. But the Holy Spirit is gently knocking on our doors. He is trying to see if anybody can open the door for him. If anybody is willing to worship him. So he can flow in us. Flow for us. And flow through us. There are so many dry lands around us. See, the, the, there are trees on the banks. When, when the water is flowing, there are trees on the ba banks. What is happening? And it shall be, ninth verse. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. Will live. Can somebody shout hallelujah for that? Hallelujah. That is what you carry. Life. Life. Wherever you go, when they, where there is death, you can bring life. Financially broken situation, you can bring life. Physically broken situation, you can bring life. Mentally broken situation, you can bring life. But it is not in you. It is not of you. But it is something that is living in you. The rivers of the living waters. Living waters that we have inside of us. Let that flow. Let that river flow. When you, when you are struggling with something, don't worry. Oh, what am I going to do? Look at the one that already knows how to heal it. Look at the one who already has the answer. Today I want to set some of you free today. You're not letting the Holy Spirit do his job. You're not letting him do his job. When he wants to set you free, you're holding on to your own shame and your own guilt. Oh, I don't know who you are. My sister, my brother, let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that hole in Jesus' name. So you can be free from condemnation and let the Holy Spirit flow through you. You may be in a valley, but the water flows through the valley too. That's what the word says. If there is a valley, it still flows. It doesn't stop. It is willing to fill you up. That's the river. That's the river. Let it, let it flow. Wherever it goes, it goes on. Wherever the rivers will go, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there uh, for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. Wherever the river goes. I want to ask you something. Are you going or are you letting the river go? The life, the situations that you are facing, the issues of your life, wherever you are, whatever you are going, are you going or are you letting the river flow? Are you let, 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 when, when the time that you are feeling sick, when the time when you are feeling down, it is the time for the river to flow, not for you to flow. That's the same place where you let the river flow and that river will heal it. Not you. Not you. That's why when, 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 whenever people say, I am sick, I am not feeling well, I can't make it to church, I'm like, that's the best place to be when you are sick. Because that's where the presence of God is coming. That's where we are worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, where His presence can come and take over. Amen? So he, he, wherever the river goes, it, it shall be healed. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it, and, and, and it, it talks about even, this is a prophecy about Israel, the great sea, the, 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 their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. Look at this thing. This is even connects you to your prosperity. You want prosperity in your life? It can only go through that flow. It is not about how much money you make. It is about how much you let the Holy Spirit flow. How much you can hold the Holy Spirit. How much you can desire the Holy Spirit. And let that flow. Let the, let the Spirit of the living God take over your finances. Let Him tell you what to do with your finances. Let Him heal your finances. Let Him give you the opportunities, the works that He needs you to do for Him. Do it with all faithfulness. 
if he is asking you to volunteer in a church if he is asking you to volunteer in a in a shelter no matter what he is leading you go do it because he is bringing prosperity to you he is bringing great fish into you that nobody can do that for you we need to let it flow we need to let it flow and let it flow um 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 uh Okay, the 12th verse. Along the banks of the river, along the banks of the river, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Food, they, uh, they, they, their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. Oh, look at that. A continual harvest. Can you imagine that? The last time I saw, I couldn't find certain fruits if they are not in season. But this is talking about, I don't care for the season. As long as you are on the bank, you are bearing it. You are going to bear fruit. So now look at this. God who is about time and seasons is offering a solution for us. If we choose to follow it, we don't have to depend on anything. Oh, it's not my time. It is not this. It is not that. It is not my talent. It is not my forte. No, you don't have to look at all those things because he himself is making sure to bring it to pass in our lives. But all we need to do is let it flow. Let the Holy Spirit flow into it. You will have a continual harvest into your life. Though even the leaves will not wither. Oh, I don't know about you. That in alone itself makes me want to dance. Even the leaves will not wither. There are, there, there's not going to be a dry leaf. It's, you know, you know. even if you have trees. I, I, I grew up in, 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 in India. We are a farming family, like I said. <coughs> We had these these uh, 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 um, tanks, fish tanks, uh, uh, there when we had the water all the time, and when we had the, the 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 trees, the coconut trees that are on the banks, and we had some trees out off the banks, like they are far away, but the trees that are on the banks produced more fruit all the time than the trees that were away from the water, because they were always continually supplied and they are continually bearing fruit. And God wants us to be somebody who bears fruit in season, off season. All the time. Because he is the same all the time. And he is expecting us to be the same all the time. When you are going through drought, when you are going through famine, when you are going through pain, when you are going through shame, even then you can bear fruit. Even then you have the ability to bear fruit if you let the river flow. If you let the water flow. Now, then it goes on. And it, it, it goes, they will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. The fruit will be for the food and their leaves for medicine. Healing. Healing right there. Right there. This water offers us healing. Before you take a pill, take a pill of Holy Spirit. Take a pill of him every day. Lord, I exalt you. Before, I'm, I'm not against any pills, anything like that. Go do it. They might have some side effects. But this one, no side effects. Oh, if I were you, if I'm on any kind of medication, I'd rather have more of this. Because I want to get rid of the other one with side effects. I want to take more of this. So I'll be free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I'm going after that. I want full freedom in my life. So I want this to flow in and through me. And this is where the word of God says to us. Proverbs 4.23. It reads like this. Go ahead. Proverbs 4.23. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. It is your heart. That's why he says guard it. You better guard the thing because out of it is flowing the issues of life. Don't put all the garbage in there. Trying to come up with all these theologies, all these ideologies. Push them away. 
guard your heart because out of it is bringing your healing out of it is coming your your deliverance from your poverty out of it is coming your breakthrough god out of it is coming your answer for your prayer out of it is coming your favor out of it is coming your intelligence out of it is coming your wisdom the godly wisdom is coming from within not from elsewhere it is here it is here it is in us so let it flow let it flow let it flow let it flow so it can continue to touch our lives and touch the lives around us today i encourage you all to be those reservoirs where you let the water flow let the holy spirit flow and let him minister to us not us i'm going to tell you again and again we don't need you we need the one in you we need the holy spirit in you your trouble doesn't need you because you're only going to make it worse. But the trouble needs the Holy Spirit who is its redeemer. Who sets it free. We need more of him. Amen. Let's all stand up in his presence. I'm going to make these statements before we end. As long as I am letting the Holy Spirit flow fresh. All the people and the branches depending on me will not stop bearing fruits. Everything that depends on you is bearing fruit because you are letting the freshness of the Holy Spirit flow. Don't be those ten, don't be those swamps where the water is getting stagnant. Let it be fresh every single day. What the quota you got yesterday is not enough. We need more of it. What we got today is not enough. We need more of it. Always seeking the freshness of the Holy Spirit. It depend it all depends on me going from the fresh go going for the freshness of the Holy Spirit. I need fresh. I need you fresh today, God. I know you touched me yesterday. I'm happy for that, but I need you today. Jesus, I need you today. Holy Spirit, I need you today. Flow. Flow, can you flow in me, Lord? Can you flow for me? And can you flow through me? Use my hands, use my eyes, use my legs, use my feet. Use everything of me. Let it flow. I want to, when I lay hands on some sick, they will be delivered because you are flowing through me, God. When I walk through the poverty, they are going to set free. The, the, the poverty cannot stand because you are flowing through me, God. When I am going through shame, it is not going to stand because I am letting you flow. Flow through me, Lord. Flow through me. Take over. Take over me, Lord, so you can work your way in and through me. The last reminder. The Holy Spirit is the manifester of God's word. You want this to manifest in your life? You cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen to that? Do you agree with that? If you agree, can you shout out amen? Awesome, awesome. We need the Holy Spirit to manifest God's will in our lives. We need more of Him, more of the fellowship with Him than anything or anybody out there. I don't care what you think about me. I love you. But I care more for what the Holy Spirit thinks about me. I need Him. Even to be the best for you, I need Him. This is what I tell my wife. Today she wants me to get ready so fast. I'm like, I need the fix of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going anywhere. If the service has to be late, it'll be late. But I need him. I went and spent time with God and, and worshipped him within. And when he took over, I'm like, I asked, Lord, I, I feel you. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you are here. Now I can run. Now I can run this day. Let, let, us, let us be conscious of it and let us receive more of him. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we give thanks that you are with us, God, that you are leading us and guiding us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Forgive us for any times that we have quenched you. We repent over that, God. Show us any things, any thoughts, any plans, any actions of us that is stopping you from flowing. Today, we want to declare it boldly. We need more of you. More of you. We are thirsty for you, God. Fill us up. 
so we can be those dams that that where we where the waters will continue to flow and heal the lands god heal the people around us heal our lives god the, our bodies will be healed because we let the river flow oh we give thanks for it lord any place that we are blocking you any place that we are not receiving you give us a quickening that we will be aware of it and we will let you flow father we need more of you. You be exalted. You be lifted up. More of you and less of us. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Flow in us. Flow for us. And flow through us. All for your glory. In the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.